All right, are you all ready? Can you see my screen? Yeah, Slack 101, channels and group direct messages. Yeah, got it. Okay, all right. Uh, so first of all, uh, thank you so much, uh, Susie, for helping uh, put this uh, session together. Um, Susie actually put together kind of like a brief email, um, kind of a guideline um, for getting started on Slack. The main purpose of today is kind of like as we're starting to kind of organize our Slack workspace and get ready to transition everyone next week is just to give you all kind of a heads up on like, you know, uh, some uh, channel management um, uh, guidelines uh, with the kind of a base assumption that a lot of us are actually going to be managing uh, most of the channels on Slack. So we want to make sure we start off by creating a pretty good baseline. And then over time, naturally, people will start creating their own channels for different purposes. But we just want to make sure we have a pretty good um, baseline to get started with. So that's uh, the purpose of today. Um, this is how you all probably feel about uh, the upcoming uh, transition to Slack. Uh, <laughs> something along these lines, I guess. Uh, what generally people love about Slack is the organization, right? Everything is uh, very tidy. Uh, we're gonna be able to finally separate our uh, personal WhatsApp messages from our professional ones. So this is great. That's amazing. <laughs> we're all very excited yeah, about that. <laughs> finally, finally. Some, uh, uh, yeah. better, Where's the uh, siren when you need one? I've missed so many balance. personal messages because of work. Exactly. Your, families, yeah. your families would My personal life doesn't that. exist because of WhatsApp. <laughs> and we also love GIFs. It, by the way, it is GIF, uh, but we also love GIFs. That's a great feature of uh, Slack. And there are also a lot of other fun features other than just kind of like GIFs. Uh, it's just a very um, uh, great boost for uh, productivity and uh, efficiency. It is GIF. Uh, and what we all hate. Call it GIF. Does anybody else call it GIF? Where does that come from? It's, it's GIF. It's GIF. Uh, there are some, <laughs> you know, some people that believe it's GIF. It's GIF. It's definitely GIF. Uh, we all don't like oh. spam. And that's one of the issues that people really suffer from uh, as we transition to Slack. There are just like too many channels and messages to keep track on. I know it was probably like challenging on WhatsApp. It's going to also be pretty challenging on Slack. The main advantage is that now we can actually like, you know, move Slack to like silent mode during the weekend or at nighttime and just kind of forget about it uh, for a few hours. That's great. But in general, we don't want to kind of go back and open our Slack on a Sunday morning or Monday morning and um, figure out that we have like so many messages and we don't really know where to get started from. Um, and we also don't like clutter. So just having like too much of anything is probably not good. We don't want to have like too many ad hoc channels for everything under the sun. Uh, so that's the motivation for today. So we just put together some basic guidelines to help keep us all happy and zen. Uh, yeah, you put your gift skills onto the special skills in your CV because it's really on point, I have to say. <laughs> Uh, yeah, if a picture is worth a thousand world, uh, words, then uh, a GIF is probably like 10,000 or so. Um, so uh, uh, what's a channel? Uh, and that's all uh, kind of uh, thanks, Susie, actually, for helping us organize all that. Uh, so channels are spaces for all the uh, people, tools, and files you need to get work done in Slack. Uh, channel is basically the equivalent to a uh, group that we have on WhatsApp. Uh, but there is also a kind of like a nice... Um, this. Uh, difference. Uh, first, we have public channels and private ones. So public channels are all about promoting transparency and inclusivity. The whole idea is that everything you have on a public channel is easily searchable, and anyone can just kind of like find the channel and join in. So for example, it's really good for things that where we actually want people to opt into uh, very easily. For example, we want to have our country level updates anything we want to post, like, you know, donor facing pictures, uh, weekly, monthly, quarterly updates about what's going on in our country. 
it's a really good idea to just create kind of like a public channel, like let's say Uganda updates and anyone who wants to track and follow it can join. And if it's too noisy uh, or too spammy, you can just you know, leave or opt out of the channel or just turn off notifications for that one. And that's all fine. Uh, so those would be kind of like pretty common usages. In general, I think as an organization, we do wanna try and promote uh, transparency as much as we can to prevent uh, from kind of um, having information silos. But you know, there are times when we actually do need a, a private channel. Those would usually be for things that you know should not be open to all members. So for example, if we have like a team level channel, we don't want um, everyone to be able to join in. We want it to be kind of like a, a safe space and also to be very dedicated to what the team actually needs to, to discuss. Uh, so we, we're gonna have kind of team level channels. For example, Israel Office is actually a private one, is a private channel we're gonna have for every country. So Zambia team, for example. And we also may have um, private channels for things that are a bit more proprietary or confidential or should actually be kept in a small group. So for example, we may have something like budget planning for a small group that is working on the budget planning as the name suggests. Or Zambia leads, for example, if we wanna set up something with like, let's say, the Africa programs director and like the country directors and deputies and the country manager, it may be kind of like a small group to just have it become more of like a steering committee for that um, country. So that's pretty similar actually to what we've been doing uh, with WhatsApp so far. Can I ask a question or is yes, it- Yes, uh, of course. Keep... Yeah, yeah, go for it. And... Go for it. Okay. So for example, um, if we have the Zambia management team, but we have different topics, we have different projects. Can we have like the private um, group of, of Zambia management, for example, and then have different channels saying like finance um, projects, um, like yeah. within yeah. the... You could definitely uh, just keep in mind that sometimes mm -hmm. having too many channels is also a good source of confusion for people who don't really know which message should go in the right one. So if, if there is like a very mm -hmm. big overlap within uh, the same group of people, just kind of like a different channel name, uh, you should really consider maybe it just belongs in the same channel and you can just manage separate threads uh, mm -hmm. for like finance related conversations or for planning related conversations or any of that. Uh, but it's, you know, it's up to you to decide. Um, it's definitely an option. Is yeah, there yeah, the capability of, okay. oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. Is there the capability of creating threads inside a channel or are threads just you kind of open up the people that you want and just start kind of like a open thread? So that's a great question. Um, the next slide is actually about that. Uh, before we get there, uh, Gil, do you want to ask another question? Yeah, so I was just, I'm just still trying to understand. Can you give examples of a public channel then? And also it says here, that private channels are for conversations that should not be open to all members. So this is members of, of what? To all members of the workspace. Sorry about that. Uh, okay. So a couple of good examples for a public channel. First one are IA Global, which will probably in the future will be named General or Global, just for kind of like consistency. Uh, that's a public channel. Another good okay. example, we may wanna have kind of a broadcast of like country level updates. That could be like a public channel. Uh, it, we may have like a, like a water engineering um, group for kind of like, you know, to share more broadly standards and guidelines around like water engineering that we don't mind if anyone else in the organization can actually access. That could be a public channel. I don't see a good reason why it should be like a private one, but uh, good examples for private ones are like things that are like uh, restricted to the team which like, okay. you know, Zambia team, we, wanna, we want them to have a space to discuss anything, kind of like all the ongoing uh, operations and management of anything going on in their country. We don't need everyone, you know, in IA to be able to kind of join in and kind of uh, uh, stock on like what's happening. So there. it seems that most of the WhatsApp groups, like uh, maybe two thirds will probably end up being private. That's probably true. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I would assume that. Thank you. Um, and then we have direct messages. So, you know, these are kind of like, just like any other uh, WhatsApp um, message, you know, we can have just direct message threads with people. Uh, in general, it's a, it's a good uh, idea to have like all your one-to-one -one communications. If it's just like two people, you don't necessarily need to set up a channel. 
unless you may want to keep it for like organization. But again, this is where I would go back to my previous point uh, to Tamar, is that uh, it may actually create confusion in terms of like what goes where. So like if you have kind of like less channels and they're a bit more kind of um, clear in terms of like the themes or like the types of topics to discuss, it may actually help you further with like uh, uh, clarity around like what goes where. So ideally, for example, if I have like a one-to-one -one, um, um, channel, you know, with uh, Terra, for example, like I would probably just want to have like a direct message and, and just everything is uh, being kept there. Uh, there is no reason really to create a channel for that. Um, but we may, for example, find ourselves starting like a direct message, starting to discuss something which is ad hoc. And then over time, we realize that we may actually want to add a few more people into the conversation. So those would be like group direct messages that may over time actually be converted into a private uh, channel. Uh, so to, to give an example, basically any kind of like ad hoc conversation with multiple participants, we would want to use a group direct message. This is something that does not exist in WhatsApp and is very easy actually to set up in Slack. Uh, you just kind of like uh, start a new message. You select all the people that are relevant to that thread and you send them a message. Uh, you don't have to set up a, a channel for that. So for example, you know, like Shai wants to verify that some parameter is available on our monitoring system with Mayor and Ben and Jeremy. So she can just basically start a, a message thread or like a group direct message, ask them a question. Maybe if over time this becomes like kind of like a, a broader topic, if we want to add additional people, uh, if we want to continue keeping track on it, we may actually want to um, convert it into a channel. But in many cases, it's just a good way to handle a lot of the ad hoc conversations. Um, so as mentioned in the beginning, our motivation is to help reduce clutter. Uh, channels are a great way to organize ongoing communications per project, team, department, et cetera. Usually like something that has like an ongoing uh, theme. Uh, they also allow better retention of messages and any member that is added to a channel can easily see all the past conversations, which is really important. That's something I found actually as a pain point on like my first week here. I joined and I wish I could actually uh, see uh, prior conversations, threads, and stuff like that, uh, because then, like, potentially, like, those may, may actually answer a lot of my uh, questions in, as a newcomer. So that's a good opportunity, actually, for us to help uh, better ma manage our organizational knowledge. Uh, but then, as mentioned, high on that point, sorry, um, yeah. it's also really important to remember that we need to keep everything professional in those channels because they can be visible for new people who join. Um, so obviously it's absolutely great to have all the personal conversations you want with your teams, be close with everybody. It's lovely to have a great rapport, um, but just to be mindful of what is said in those channels because anyone who joins can see the rest of the history. So not to then, you know, say, oh, you know, such and such, what a pain, because it's gonna be visible moving forward. So just to try and keep that in mind, yeah. I guess, in these open groups where other people can and, and will join at different times. I'll give a good example. Uh, when we're discussing, for example, like potential candidates who may join the team, uh, you probably would not want to do it at the uh, team channel unless this is kind of an update about, hey, like, you know, uh, uh, so-and-so just signed and they're going to join next week. We're so excited. That's great. Like, that, you know, that's probably uh, newsworthy there. But like, if you're still debating whether to hire that person or not, you probably want to keep it in a kind of more ad hoc um, thread or channel for that purpose. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. I agree, uh, Michal. Uh, the more channels you have, as mentioned, the more channels you'll need to keep track on. And like this may also uh, create a, a big source of confusion. So in general, we want to use a channel for any uh, team level and project level communications. If you're not sure, you can always start with a direct group message uh, and then later convert it into a channel. So here's an example. For example, like, um, you know, this morning we thought about, you know, maybe we should uh, uh, reconsider our, uh, our coffee machine uh, strategy in the office, maybe move to something that is a bit more environmentally friendly. Again, this is just like a silly example, uh, but an important one uh, nonetheless. Um, over time, we may discover that this is becoming like a huge project and now we want to have like, you know, like the coffee machine project. Uh, thread because we need to add uh, a few more people. You know, Emily has uh, some strong opinions about like 
getting the best beans. So maybe we would want to add her as well to the channel. Uh, so that's when we can actually uh, convert the uh, conversation thread, like the group direct message into a channel. We just name it uh, coffee machine project in that case, change it to private. And now it's a channel with everything we discussed up until that what moment. Go ahead. Different then. So what's the difference between a group direct message to um, a channel or a thread, like if, if they're all on the same yeah. conversation. I mean, so it's a it's a great question. So group direct message is only with the people who are uh, copied on that direct message, and um, and you can't add more members to that thread. So, so let's say like I have this uh, uh, thread. Can you hear me well? By the way. Yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's say I started this thread with uh, Sharon, Susie, and uh, Tara. Uh, and now I want to uh, add another member. I can't do that. It has to remain the same group. If I do want to do it, I have to convert it into, if I do want to do it and have the new person joining see the past messages, I have to convert it into a channel. So usually I would just kind of create like an ad hoc group message when mm -hmm. like I'm pretty uh, certain about kind of like the number of people that need to be there or like the audience that actually needs to be there. Uh, if you're not sure, you can always kind of like convert it to a channel later on. Yeah, I have a qu quick question. Um, maybe there's not a concrete answer, but so for example, now we're gonna be flying to Tanzania and we wanna have a, a group what would you recommend? Do you think it would make more sense to create a channel for the four or five of us that are just for on that, niche, you know, that week or two weeks? Or would it make more sense to have it as a group, a direct group message? Yeah, um, probably both can work. You can have like the direct message um, uh, for that, you know, group of people. You can also create a channel for that and then just archive it at the end of it. So we can have like, you know, Tanzania, February 2022 trip. You can archive uh, and put it aside so it's not. And then at the, the end, you can just archive it and just kind of remove it from your list of okay. channels and you don't, if you don't no longer need it. Yeah. Nice. All right. Kind of look at it as like short term versus long term. Like if, if I know that that conversation is for a specific purpose and it will come to a conclusion, I just kind of keep the group thread. But like for one, like, Groups that I know that will continue on like long term, I, I will open up a channel. Right. Yeah. Um, so now, you know, we made it into a, a group as, it, as mentioned. Uh, some uh, naming conventions. So in general, we would, in Slack, we would prefer using dashes. It's a bit more readable. Uh, so just uh, use dashes to separate between words. Uh, for example, Israel office, uh, Israel dash office. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to switch off my AirPods. Okay, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah? All right, cool, thanks. Um, in general, um, yeah. let's try just to make it easy to categorize and index all the channels. We would start with a primary team name or the project name and then move on to more specifics as opposed to the other way around. So for example, Malawi team, Malawi leads, Malawi management, Malawi XYZ project, Malawi updates, Malawi water engineering, whatever we wanna do, because that would just make it easier to group everything and just as we go, as we quickly scan through the list of channels we have, we can quickly see what's uh, what has new notifications and what doesn't and just track everything in one place. Or another example, database, we can have a working group for the people that are actually working on the database. We can have a database updates channel just to, for Jeremy, for example, to update on upcoming releases and new features. We can have a database, I don't know, integration channel if we need to integrate it with something else. And we want to create this kind of uh, uh, channel for that. Um, some tips on adding people to channel. So it's, um, you can't really invite people, you know, into a uh, private channel. So there is a, a small hack that you can do when you're starting a channel, you can just keep it public at first. Um, 
share the link to that channel on the WhatsApp group that you're looking to migrate. Uh, ask everyone to join in. So they will just tap on the link. Uh, open. It will open up the uh, channel on Slack. They will not meet, be members yet. So they will have to tap or click on join channel. And then once everyone's there, then you can just change it to private. So for example, if you have like a, um, um, a group with your uh, Malawi team, for example, you can just kind of send them the link to Malawi team and th then ask them everyone to join in. And once they're all in, you can just convert it into private. Um, you can't go from private into public. So just keep that in mind. If you already have a private channel, you can't undo it. Um, next week on Tuesday morning, we'll be kind of flipping the switch and ask everyone to stop using WhatsApp for all internal IA communications. And that's probably going to be a little bit of a kind of painful transition because, you know, it takes time to get rid of old habits. Uh, but we do want to try and like help accelerate that process because uh, it's going to be harder to manage your notifications and the important messages if you're using actually two platforms. It's going to just create a lot of confusion. Uh, so to help prevent that, uh, what we would recommend is to convert your WhatsApp groups, the ones that you are actually admins of, just convert them into broadcast only, which will then allow only admins to post new messages into the group. So at least like everyone can go back into that group if they wanna look up a past conversation, something you discussed or anything like that. So it's still there for archiving, but every time someone will come into that uh, WhatsApp group out of habit and we want to post a new message, they will just won't be able to do that and they will have to go to Slack. So I, I would highly recommend that. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much Maybe convert it into the WhatsApp group. One at a time. Sorry, who was uh, first? No, Susie. Thank you. Can I add two thoughts? Uh, can I share my screen just very quickly? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually can't. Um, <laughs> all right. And I think now we should be able to. Perfect. Thanks. So I know that everyone has been already using Slack, just like three thoughts for the weekend and everything. First of all, I would highly suggest, I already said it to the engineers yesterday, to download Google Drive. Here you can go to apps and add app. So Slack actually sees if you got any document. For example, Guy uh, sent me his PPT and here Google Drive, like this conversation with Google Drive shows it to me. So it basically collects for me all the documents that I got and I can just save it to Google Drive. The other thing is if let's say you get a message on Friday that is not so urgent, but you still check your Slack, you can go onto your messaging and you can set a reminder which I think is super useful because it's not like you're gonna forget it. I come here and I say, remind me about this and it will remind me or I can custom made it, how it's reminding me. And the last thing is that if I want to reply to someone but I don't send reply, I can, uh, it will save it as a draft. Let's say I want to reply as a thread. I know we'll all talk about this on Monday probably when Guy gives us the big uh, presentation but these are so many things, like such useful things that I just wanted to say very quickly. Here, anyway, if I want to reply, I don't know how to do this now, but uh, it will save it in the draft if I, don't, uh, if I don't send share. I can even say save draft and I can just send it later. If you want to make a group message, but first you want to double check or whatever, you can do this. So that's all what I wanted to share, but I think these are very useful tips. I think before you continue that this option of integrating Google Drive into Slack is a very good option that we might need to, you know, to move forward to to the team like in global because we're using that so much. So maybe it's a good, you know, it's a good record also to, to keep in mind. Yeah. So I think we're going to do a couple of things because Slack is new to uh, so many of us. Um, I think we're, A, we're going to have that workshop on Monday to walk everyone through kind of like the best practices and tips of how to use Slack most productively. Obviously, we won't be able to cover everything, but we're going to create a public channel for like Slack hacks or like Slack tips 
for everyone to just kind of like follow and uh, just get kind of uh, more ongoing tips or even just share with one another uh, ongoing tips and best practices. There are a couple of other uh, really useful apps like the Zoom app is really good because then you can just very easily start a, a Zoom uh, call from within Slack. Super useful. The Google Calendar one is also pretty useful because then you can schedule things directly from Slack. Um, there are quite a few things that you can do that would really boost everyone's uh, uh, productivity. And I think some of it is just going to be kind of like an online discovery process. I, um, I'm assuming the answer is no, but is there any way to transfer conversations from WhatsApp groups to the new Slack groups? Uh, you can you're... export your WhatsApp chat, by the way. You can uh, also, go to your WhatsApp I chat. Tried. And it doesn't chat. work. I tried like to see if there's some sort of integration of, of mess <laughs> like messages that we could move, but I don't. I didn't find anything. Does anybody else find anything? So what I would do is I would export the chat and I would just send it into my Slack chat, like that file that you exported, that zip file. You just send it to your Slack chat. So you, whenever you need, you can open it if there's no better way. Yeah, I would do maybe what Susie is recommending as a hack. Uh, but again, it's there, there is no easy way to migrate all the past messages, unfortunately. Um, Um, also, just I know that we're starting with internally, like internal groups and everything that we're moving over, but um, at some point we should talk about, maybe I missed it, but about contractors, vendors, everything else, because we have a ton of WhatsApp groups that are with other people that are not going to be on our Slack channel uh, or Slack um, workspace. And so just to understand what that would look like, because we have tons of groups that are still going to be on WhatsApp for those. That's a, that's a really good point. Um, that's going to be our kind of next phase is to figure out our third party communications. For now, we just wanted to focus on internal ones and just declutter everyone's WhatsApps. Um, yeah, there are like multiple channels that we can consider. We're gonna have also Odoo, where we have like a CRM system to help us manage these communications. Uh, we can use emails. There is actually a pretty seamless integration between, between emails and Slack. So for example, we can have all the email messages we get from third parties actually being uh, forward that automatically into a Slack channel. There are quite a few good um, uh, uh, things that we can actually do, but we just kind of like want to look at things more holistically and figure out what's the right long-term solution for all that. All right. Um, don't want to take too much of your time. Um, if you have any more questions, feel free to Slack me or Susie or Tal. Uh, Tali is kind of our like a uh, Slack oracle, so uh, he knows quite a bit about it. Um, we're also going to have the workshop on Monday where we'll share a bit more. And uh, as mentioned, it's going to be a process. So like over time, we're going to discover more and more things. Um, but, you know, definitely feel free to raise any questions you may have. Sounds good. And uh, as, a, as a good action item, feel free to go ahead and kind of uh, spend the next couple of days recreating your uh, WhatsApp groups, or at least the ones that are most active uh, into Slack and make sure that you have uh, all the right people there. So that, you know, comes February 1st, we can very easily just uh, flip the switch and uh, transition everyone smoothly. That's kind of our biz biggest motivation right now. Ooh. Thanks, Thank guys. Thank Susie again for uh, helping set this up and uh, gathering all that uh, really great information about uh, the Slack terminology and all that. Uh, and we'll see you all, all on Monday. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Bye, everyone.